Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So I hope everyone is doing good and everybody is staying safe and healthy. I know it has been a really long time since we last checked in and I haven't been making a lot of YouTube videos as I promised. Let me tell you, it is actually getting harder than I thought it will be. So after a long time today, I finally got some time to create another YouTube video. And this time I'm back with a different type of video. So you already have read the title, right? So this video is about me and how I got into software engineering. This video is kind of a special video for me because I have finally decided to share my journey into software engineering and now how I did things in my own career to get to where I am right now and I really hope that from my story a few people at least will be inspired and will have the motivation to get into software engineering. So before starting, uh, those of you who are new to my channel and listening to me for the first time, please do subscribe to my channel because it will mean the world to me. So in this video, I'm going to share two things. The first thing is how I got into software engineering. So I'm going to share how I developed interest in coding and into tech and how I decided to finally have a job in software company. Second thing that I'm going to share is that looking back now, what all things were important that I did and what all things are important for anyone who wants to get into this career. So without wasting any more time, let's start with the video. So how I got into software engineering. So my journey starts back from very early age from the childhood everyone in their childhood thinks of what they want to be right so since childhood uh, i just had this thing in mind that i want to be a computer engineer and the reason for that was that my dad is a computer engineer himself he did a cs degree computer engineering itself had that ring to it. it it sounded too cool back then so this is legit the point where my journey started fast forward to class 10th uh, it was time to choose uh, your brand naturally since i always had this thing in mind that i want to be a computer engineer like my dad i did end up taking science and i studied science for two years in my school for 11th and 12th and during that time we also had to choose additional subject so it was very obvious for me there as well so just right away went for computer subject back in 11th and 12th i was exposed to c plus plus for the first time and i will be honest that i did not like it that much back then i figured out the subject i started giving it more time so eventually it got better I started liking C++ eventually towards the end of my 12th class so I was kind of feeling that I can fall in love with this language like C++ is a good language I started loving the language after my 12th I got into Neta Jusubash Institute of Technology name is changed to NSUT now so I got into the CS branch of NSIT and I was ready to study computer engineering right I am sure it is intimidating for a lot of people uh, who enter their college uh, for me as well it was like very intimidating yeah, I'll be honest that I was not one of the best students at my college because the syllabus was hardly relevant to the actual computer science back then. So I did not enjoy the syllabus and the studies in my college. Looking back, I feel so stupid about the thought process I had back then. I was really finding it harder to maintain the percentage that we need for the placements. But I decided there was this huge culture of coding. Uh, like, the real reason that I started coding was the frustration of not able to do good academically. Yeah, I remember that uh, I ended up thinking that what am I going to do with my life? Because at that moment, I was just thinking of what actually will be helpful for me so then it just struck my mind that okay competitive programming is something that i haven't given a chance and i haven't tried it yet so it was second semester and that day i made my account on a few coding platforms like code shift code courses podge and I remember I ended up solving a couple questions, uh, just a couple questions to see what exactly it is. I realized one thing that I don't have to actually learn anything. I don't have to learn any theory here. I just have to apply the logic. Uh, like it's very logical, mathematical, aptitude type question that we just need to solve. So that was the first time that I was exposed to competitive programming in my second semester. I thought that, okay, this is maybe something for me and I maybe don't suck at everything was like the realization point. 
so from that day it was very clear that i have to maintain minimum 70% so that i am able to sit in almost every company of my choice like microsoft or google or any company that is coming on campus and the second thing that i made sure was that i need to get better at this competitive programming thing be good at this ds algo stuff and i need to get my basics very clear the main aim was to get better at it every day gradually it was happening i was able to see the difference in the way i was able to all the questions one thing that which was like not a good thing was that i was giving so much power to my percentage that i was so underconfident on my own skills of being able to clear the interviews i was attaching my capability of doing anything in life with how much percentage i am able to bring i was actually constantly comparing myself with others around me i was literally like literally waiting to get any kind of smallest validation that it is not true eventually i got it i was able to crack internship interviews for companies and i was able to get my offers for jobs as well so at that point once i was able to differentiate these two things and i was able to see that no i still have some hope for myself i can still do something with my life so that was like the turning point for me and I would say the rest is history. I did crack the internship interview for Microsoft back then, and I got the pre-placement offer from Microsoft as well. Later, after some time, I was also able to crack Facebook, which is now Meta. So I am currently a software engineer at Meta, as you all know. I think uh, there were a lot of myths and a lot of theories that were not true around software engineering. So now let's talk about things that I feel, looking back now, uh, that were important and some things that were like redundant. Uh, first one of them. is that you have to be good in academics if you want to be at a good tech company so this was something that i had in my mind for the longest time like all four years of my college i had this in my mind there is no connection to you being placed in a good company and the percentage that you have in college and if you are someone who is struggling with studies at college but are good with ds and algo you don't have to worry at all if you are not able to score good marks it's okay it's nothing to worry about it's nothing to panic you just need to to have good psl go skills and that is all that is needed to crack an interview of a good company of any fan company or any company in general so you don't have to worry about your marks at all the second myth that i have often heard people say is that you need to have a cs degree to be in a good software engineering company again that is not true these days anyone from any field can come to computer engineering side and have a job in software engineering without actually having a cs degree again i would say it all comes down to having skills that are needed to do the job nowadays the culture is changing and instead of on campus the companies uh, are like open and you can just apply to any company off campus if we talk about a broad culture there is no culture of on campus at all so i have worked for 2 years in europe in london and i have worked for around a year here as well in us california in silicon valley and i have really seen a mixed bag of people and i definitely see a lot of people around me who are software engineers but who don't have computer engineering degrees some of them are from the physics background some of them are like from a totally different background not at all related to science but they are still doing their jobs they are at fang they are doing the best job anyone can do right so they just have those skills every day i see more and more evidence of this myth being untrue that you don't have to be from a computer science background to be a computer engineer software engineering itself is a very special field where think of starting in it today and you can just find all the resources online you unlike other fields where you might need some hands on experience so Third myth that I usually uh, hear people say, and even I used to believe back then when I was a student myself, is that you need to be from a good college to get into a good company like fan company. No, that is not true at all. Nowadays, companies just want anyone to work for them who has the skills that they want. So you don't have to think that if you are not from like IIT or NSIT, you you will not get a job. No, that's not at all true. 
you just need to keep practicing your coding skills your ds algo skills you just need to be good at those interviewing questions to get into a good company and that is the only thing that matters it does not matter what cg you have it does not matter which college you are from it does not matter what your major or minor was it does not matter at all it does not matter i can't say it enough because when i was scared about what is going to happen with my life i wish i had someone to tell me but i hope people who are listening to me they are are able to understand this that none of these things actually matter once you have the interview in your hand no one can stop you from clearing those if you are good at all those skills and definitely if you just keep trying and practicing every day those skills will get better believe me because i started from scratch i started from zero to here where i am and i can tell you that it was difficult but it was definitely worth it so it is something so basic and so logical that you are building right you are improving your knowledge on the bs algo thing which is actually not something that you have to like learn or cram pure basic logic i know everyone or uh, wants to get to a company which might be their dream company and something that seems like an impossible thing from the experience i had and myself being a facebook engineer i dreamt it right i had a dream that i want to be at meta and back then it used to be unreal it used to be impossible but i am here so from my experience all i can tell you is that it is a journey it is a process you keep getting better at software engineering at coding at yes algo and definitely will be able to crack the interviews for your dream company as well so you can join a fan even after a few years of working in a company which is not part of fan like i did as time passes and as much experience you gain with time you will definitely eventually end up into a fan because it's all about the blind demand right so there is a huge demand of skilled computer engineers or software engineers in the industry and there are simply less number of people who do this and who choose this as a career but it is inevitable that anyone can drop you and if you are from a tier 3 college i cannot work for these companies that like no you can you definitely can you are meant to work there you deserve to be there as much as a person from iit or any other good college deserves to be there you definitely need to be patient once you start into this career there will be times when recruiters themselves reach out to you for opportunities like these and you just need to be ready with your updated resume updated linkedin another myth is that do you need competitive programming the answer to this is no you don't need to be good at competitive programming uh, so for my case i was okay at computer competitive program i found it interesting i found it exciting so i did that for my journey but people who don't do competitive programming do get into good companies as well you just need to pr- keep practicing the interview questions that these companies ask and as a myth that i have heard less but since we are talking about it is that does cs in school help so for my case when i was first exposed to competitive programming i already knew how to write code in c++ so it was a little bit helpful to get me started with competitive programming in college but once you have decided that you want to be into software engineering you will obviously like learn languages so it's not that helpful to have but if you are interested definitely go for it it definitely gives you a head start and an advantage over others so definitely go for it that's it for today's video hope this video video will be helpful for a lot of people and it will inspire a few of you who want to come into this field so if you like the video please give it a thumbs up and do share with friends and family who might benefit from it and people who might need to hear some of the things that i said please share it with them so that more and more people are aware of the opportunities in software development please please like and share this video and also subscribe to my channel i plan to share more and more videos i'll see you next time until then bye